So I'll start by th thanking uh, Peter and Kenneth, who are the ones who actually implemented all the backend for this for this work. What I, what I did and I'm presenting here is just the, the the deployment of this and the testing of the framework. So big thanks to Kenneth and uh, and Peter and also all the team at CSCS who who work on this on this project. So. Uh, we do claim we have reproducible HPC software installations, though the geeks uh, are saying that we have uh, we are not giving that. We do we do think that we can achieve re reproducibility. So I, uh, just one more that I think we do have uh, problems with bootstrapping sometimes when we move from one operational system to the other. But then it's that's where the the dockers and containers they can then hook in, but. After that, I can assure you that we can uh, have reproducibility with EasyView, and that's why we chose EasyView, and we are going to present. So this is the outline of the talk. I will uh, first start with the background. I think if you are here, you already know how hard is installing software on HPC, so I won't spend much time explaining all the troubles that we ran into. Uh, then I will talk about the EasyView, the framework uh, implementation on Cray. So this is the work from Kenneth and uh, and Peter. And the uh, and the, uh, the last part, I will present two use cases. So all the the two deployments on our main systems at CSCS with EasyBuild. We have many other systems. We don't have time to talk about them here. So I will focus on two systems that are Cray-based and how we managed to, to solve the, the installation problem with EasyBuild. So in the end, I will also show some uh, integration we have now with GitHub for doing continuous integration for testing the, the build software and also for archiving the, the, the recipes. So the, the problem of building HPC software in, in HPC, as I already mentioned, it's, it, it's, uh, I think it's known from you. So we had the same problem on Cray systems uh, because users, we have many requests from users and they have uh, requirements of uh, software that uh, depend on specific versions, so you cannot just do apt-get install on the software that they need. They depend really on uh, specific versions, and these versions need to coexist. So this is a, a huge problem for uh, the, the teams maintaining the software, and not always uh, these people uh, asking using the HPC systems. They are scientists. So, so they are not developers or sys admins. They don't have all the background for installing software. So they need help from, from people with this background and with experience in installing system. Also, the people de developing this scientific software, they are, not, uh, they, they are not formed on computer sciences or development. So when they produce new uh, packages, they uh, often they don't use correctly the build tools, just, as, just to name a few of the problems we see when using scientific software that you don't see in common, soft common, let's say, software outside the scientific world. Uh, so we have incomplete build uh, procedure that you don't have configured or installed, and you have tweak the, to tweak the files manually. Then this is my, f my favorite interactive installation scripts. This is really the thing that you shouldn't do when you're uh, when you're packaging a software, you should really provide a way that where people can install it automatically and not answering questions. Uh, which is your favorite color? Please install it here or not. So please don't do that. Uh, automation is not a new thing. So it's uh, uh, we should think that there are people working on installing the software at full time. So then the other things are. Uh, Missing documentation and also the dependency hell. These are slides from Kenneth that I'm just quoting here. So uh, the dependency hell. We can see many software uh, packages that you have. You can have up to 40 or 50 dependencies in only one software. And then, if you need to upgrade, then good luck. So this is the big picture. So we have we have a problem. So this. Uh, the request for HPC user is always growing, and unfortunately, the quality of software is not, of packaging this software is not improving. So, uh, we have solutions out there for um, for in, for installing regular software, but not specific for HPC. So, we have 
um, uh, the, the speaker before just mentioned about spec, so uh, and we have also easy build, but the uh, the other tools they don't really focus on HPC. So uh, the impact of the lack of these these tools is that when they have this the request for new software, the researchers the uh, they spend a lot of time uh, they lose a lot of time waiting, and then we also uh, uh, spend a lot. A lot of time as uh, HPC staff trying to fix that. The other main problem is that it, it has been already mentioned here is the very little collaboration among HPC sites. So everyone is doing their own builds on their own sites, and then uh, people are solving the same problem everywhere. And this is uh, th this is not good in the sense that we don't have a common uh, tool or a forum for sharing. So some sites they do they do. They do work together, but there is no common ground for the for describing a build. So people are basically redoing the same stuff on, on all sites, and there's very little um, collaboration. So this is also true on Cray systems. So that's why the, the, we we are just uh, moving the just it's just a new case the Cray system for the easy build and the H HPC. Uh, build software problem, so we have the same problem on Cray. So just uh, one slide on on Easy Build for those who do not know yet is the framework for installing a specifically scientific software. So it's not for every kind of software. So it's focused, and then the idea is to 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 group all those people who have this experience in HPC and the know-how of these people. They should be. Uh, in a single place so people can reuse. That's the advantage when someone spends hours and hours preparing a build recipe, then someone else can just take this recipe and reuse all this time that someone who's an expert, uh, as an expert, uh, spend uh, work, and then you can just reuse this to your uh, local case. So it's based in Python. It started at Ghent University in 2009. And it is open since uh, it's open source since 2012. Now we have a community. We have a, a stable version that is released every two weeks. So, from my from my experience, we can uh, always use the the new version. And we we don't I don't say we, we had zero regression so far, but every time we had it was very small and fixed. Uh, very quickly, so it is something that you can really use in production, f even for large-scale systems. So, this is my word as a, a group lead of scientific s computing support at CSCS. We have more than 500 users, and we have easy building production since more than one year. So, there are many uh, well-known uh, scientific software that are already included. You might not find everything, but uh, every package manager is. Giving the figures with the, with how many software you have, but the thing that you need to do is go there and see if how many of your software you can find it. So, I encourage you to go there to the website and check if you find your software there, and then you can have an idea if it's if it's useful for your use case or not. So, the main uh, features of Easy Build, you have uh, autonomous uh, building and installing of the software. Uh, you also have the logging, so you don't need to, to care about uh, saving the output. You're going to find the logs of the installation somewhere, and don't, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you have archiving of the build specification, so every time you build a recipe, you have a copy of this recipe somewhere so that you know that you can redo it. So this is one step for uh, achieving uh, reproducibility. Yeah, it's highly configurable on command lines or files. It's up to you or site-wide configuration. Uh, it is dynamically extendable, so you have the recipes, but you can write your own. So it, you can just extend uh, existing classes and then uh, write the, the the things that are specific to your software. Uh, so it was uh, it is tested. And it is actively developed, so you can just go to GitHub to to see that. This is just a, a graphic to show the 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 community that is sane, so it is growing. So for the moment, it's growing. I think by the moment when it stops growing, you're going just to show the figure, the numbers, and not the graphs. So for the moment, you can show the graphs. <laughs> it, it is growing, and 
just you can just look at the mailing list and you can see that it's very reactive uh, and also on GitHub. So there are usually there aren't people who have problems that will remain open. Usually, typically people have find a solution when they need to contact the the community. So uh, just one slide. I'm tr I will try to avoid getting too technical here because I, I think it's better to discuss the ideas here. So just I will present the, quickly the terminology of the of easy build. So the the easy build framework is the part that takes care of of uh, writing ins installing downloading the the packages, creating the module files, and provides all the functionalities for the that are common let's say for all the builds for all the software then we have easy blocks that are uh, specifics for are, are uh, they can be specific for a software or mostly they are generic so you have an easy block for uh, for applications that use uh, configure make for example you have one easy block for that and then depending on the application you might need one as well, but mostly you, you use only the easy config file, which, which is a recipe that is, let's say, not generic. You have the version, and the, that's one of the key ideas of easy build that you have the versions of the software everywhere in a recipe, so that you know someone else's. If someone else takes this recipe and tries to rebuild, it's going to use the exactly the same versions, and while other software. Uh, uh, in, in packages like easy build they they are more open more flexible but then there's no guarantee that you are going to use the same versions and that you are going to achieve reproducibility the last concept is the tool chain which is very important is the base for 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 uh, for any uh, uh, easy config file it uh, it's actually the compiler and also the basic libraries that uh, that are used. So typically, it's MPI, Blas, Lapac, Scalapac. This is the basic things that we see that is used on uh, on HPC. So it's called the tool chain, and it's grouped together. So it's done in a way that you, it is a, a base uh, tool chain for building the software. So I move to the next part now, uh, which is the implementation for for Cray. So what was missing to use on the Cray system and why? So this is a typical example on, uh, of an, an easy config file. What, what do we have inside for a build, for example? This is one software called a GMP. It relies on the, this tool chain. This is a tool chain which has GCC, OpenMPI, OpenBlast, so one, and it uses the configure make easy block. And then typically with easy build, you are going to rebuild everything uh, from scratch, you are going to rebuild all the tool chain that you need because you're not. You, we don't want to use the things that you have already available on the system because we might not achieve uh, the, uh, reproducibility. And then the difference on Cray is that the programming environment it's already there. So since it's provided by Cray, in this case, we do want to reuse the the existing software because they have uh, the optimized version of. Uh, of scientific libraries, libraries, and also MPI for uh, that is optimized for the, uh, the interconnect. So in the in the case of Cray, we do want to reuse this these libraries, uh, these uh, compilers, and um, and so on. So we just created uh, uh, actually Peter and Kenneth created the the easy block and the tool chain for for GNU for uh, Cray. Uh, for GNU compilers, Intel, and the others, mapping the, uh, the programming environment available on Cray to EasyBuild so that we can use the uh, Cray toolchain as any other toolchain that it was already uh, existing on, uh, on EasyBuild. So the three main uh, uh, features that had to be implemented are the support for uh, external module files, then the definition of the toolchains, and the custom easy block. I, I want. I want to thank again for Peter and Kenneth, but I won't go into details to this implementation because we don't have time here. So this is a key feature um, for uh, for the Cray support. So the support for uh, <coughs> external module files. So before Easy Build was creating and building everything from from scratch and creating the module files here. On Cray, we need to reuse these module files. So, 
So there's the support for a file where you map the, the existing modules to a way that EasyBuild can read. So this is useful for, for, it's needed for Cray, but it can also be used elsewhere if you have already modules that you want to reuse. So also the, the EasyBlock, I, I will speed up a little bit here because of the time. So the EasyBlock are specific for the, for, for the, the Cray tool chains. You, you can go on, the, on, the, on GitHub if you want to see the details. Then here is just to mention that we have one uh, tool chain for each programming environment available on Cray that we automatically map the variables that you need for uh, building software on the Cray because the, we have our wrappers on Cray. We don't use uh, GCC or the compilers directly, so we use the Cray compilers. I'll move now for the last part, which is, uh, I would say is, it's more interesting from my side because it's where uh, we managed to use this, uh, all this uh, infrastructure to deploy uh, software on production, so the two use cases that I'm going to present here. It's first uh, the machine from Metal Suisse, which is the weather forecast uh, uh, service of uh, Switzerland. The, they have production um, systems. It's, a, uh, it's two cabinets with a production and failover with a very GPU-dense system with uh, eight Tesla K80s per node, so 16 GPUs per node. Uh, and this is a CS Storm uh, series. So just to, I, I, I explain what we had in the Cray programming environment. Uh, typically, this machine is, is already different from the rest. This is a new uh, a series that they provide only partial support for the programming environment, so they provide only programming env environment Cray and not GNU and Intel, so we had to, to rebuild our software uh, from scratch. And this, in this case, even the GCC that they provided, they, it was not able to compile uh, uh, AVX instructions. So they, f they give you the hardware and they don't provide you a working compiler. So we open a bug and meanwhile, they took a long time to give an answer. And then meanwhile, we rebuilt everything with EasyBuild. It took us couple of weeks and now this software this software stack is in production since more than one year so uh, the, our main use case I move on to Pitsdine to it, which is uh, our main flagship system so it's a GPU based system uh, it has two partitions so here uh, it's our uh, largest partition with the tel Tesla Pascal P100 GPUs, and then we have the Brodo partition. So it's the, uh, according to top 500, is number eight uh, fastest uh, supercomputing in the world, and according to the Green 500, it's the second uh, most efficient uh, supercomputing with respect to energy consumption. So. This is the list of software that we, you can find for Cray on the stock EasyBuild repository, meaning that we have already contributed back. And we also have our GitHub repository where we have our recipes. And, and then here is, is just the list if you want to find, uh, look for your software. So, uh, so here is just to mention that we have, we have this GitHub repository where people can uh, can also open uh, uh, pull requests and contribute back. It's uh, for, uh, for Pitsdine specifically. We have also automatic checking of the recipes using the GitHub pull request uh, builder plugin. So we check everything before merging to the master. We check everything. And then the last thing is that we have the autonomous deployment of the software on the, on the on the system. So the final, final comments here is that uh, proprietary and uh, open source software can coexist. So we had the case where we use open source to, uh, in order to better exploit our system and what we had available. And in this case, we had the best of two worlds because we have an optim optimized software stack. And we also had support from community, both community and from, from, the, from the vendor and also mini minimizes the risks of vendor locking, meaning that we have an alternative. It was the case 
when we had a problem with the software shipped by the vendor, we managed just to rebuild everything with open source and then uh, actually don't need the software, their software stack anymore in that case. So it's, uh, it's the best of two worlds, as I said. Okay, one f slides with links that are, will be available on the web and then we have time for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillermo. Questions? Time for a couple of questions. Yeah. And regarding the vendor location, how many great uh, provided applications did you have? Uh, so regarding vendor locking, how many Cray provided applications we replaced so for the CS Storm series? We replaced all the software stacks, so meaning that uh, we don't count on the, uh, we count on them only for the operational system, and then we replaced from MPI, GCC up to all the things that Meteor Swiss needed for post processing the all the data, so I would say here at least 20 software for all the NetCDF, HDF5, all of this came from from EasyView, then we didn't have to change much. All the defaults work for them, so I would say 20 software on this case. And then in the future, maybe for the XC series, where you we might start looking in, in also using the open source only, and then I, we know that other other places like tech, they just dropped all the so all the software stack from Cray, so they use Intel compilers and MPI, and then with Easy Build we could think about doing the same the same in the future. So this now we have the possibility. So okay. More questions? I have a question. Um, how is this being received by Cray itself? Because you're, it seems like you're, or we are giving the signal to Cray that, that they're not doing a good enough job in terms of software stack, and you have to put something on top to actually make it feasible. So for the for the CS Storm series, the feeling that I have is that they don't really care. It's not important for them. It's the series that they are focusing on. The it's, it's the low end, uh, ha not harder, but the version that they for the support they don't really care. Care. That's my feeling. Uh, as for XC, they uh, not only because of the efforts on EasyBuild, but from the complaints that we have open uh, tickets that to took so much, so much time to resolve. Then uh, I think they re they realize they are not doing a good job, but they don't give any feedback f to us. So, but they know because we have people inside from Cray, and they know that we are using less and less their software. Every time we have an error before or at the same time we open a ticket, we build the software with easy build. So if they don't realize that if we continue like this, we might not need their software anymore. It's, it's bad for them. But then it's, it's the free market. So that's mm -hmm. so. OK. Yeah, that's it. Thank you okay. very much, Guillermo. Thank you.